Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. down and kill it, aren't you? Sure, we're gonna kill it, aren't we, Joe? You bet, Judge. Consider it already dead. No. No what? We're against killing of any kind. Our work here is important. Someone's polluting these swamps, and it's our job to find out who. I'm not surprised. Take a look at this. The dyes reveal high acid levels caused by industrial waste. <laughs> You still think the crocodile should be saved? If I get the chance, I won't hesitate to kill it. It takes a special breed to make it in there. And welcome back ladies and gents. So you've just heard the trailer for Killer Crocodile. This is disc number 50 from the Italian collection by 88 Films. This one came out in 1989. So here we go. The detail, the deets is brace yourself for the sharp tooth reptilian nightmare of Killer Crocodile from the notorious Fabrizio Di Angelis of zombie flesh eaters fame comes the ultimate in nature run amok films when a group of well-meaning scientists venture into the murky swamps of Santa Domingo, little do they know that they are stumbling into a toxic nightmare. Local industrial barons have foolishly been pumping their waste into the water and this has given birth to a humongous reptilian monstrosity with an equally large appetite for human flesh. 
featuring effects by the legendary Giannato De Rossi of Rambo 3 fame, Killer Crocodile delivers all the thrills, spills and chills that any self-respecting fan of eco-horror demands, with performances from Anton- Anthony Crenna, I think that's how you pronounce that, uh, son of Rambo's Richard Crenna and Hollywood legend Van Johnson of Eagles Over London, Killer Crocodile remains a firm cult favourite, even more so in stunning HD clarity thanks to the 2K restoration from 88 Films. The bonus features on this disc are a brand new 2K remaster from the original 35mm negatives in 185-1 aspect ratio, a remastered uncompressed English audio, Optional SDH subtitles, remastered uncompressed Italian audio with newly translated subtitles, half a croc, an interview with the special effects artist and director of Crocodile 2, Giannetti De Rossi about his time working on the films, an Italian in Santo Domingo, an interview with cameraman Federico Del Zoppo, Italian Crocodiles, an interview with actor Pietro Grinaldi, the trailer and the reversible sleeve with newly created artwork by Jeremy Palmier and original Italian poster art. So like I say, this is in a double box set. I don't know if they've actually got around to selling them separately yet or if they're just going to do this as the, you know, collector's edition box set run throughout. I dare say they will eventually separate them out when we move forward. So, uh, this was a first time watch for me and I will just call it like I see this movie is fucking fun as fuck a uh, so much fun to have watching this movie I had it on last night and I thought it was going to be one of those ones where every now and again I'd be picking up my phone to check my Facebook or check my emails or whatnot which is sometimes I want in some of these movies um, where things start to go a little bit whimsical and maybe less substantial um, but Killer Crocodile really has absolutely no kind of meandering bones in its body. It's a very lean, tight movie. Uh, granted, it is pretty much a carbon copy of movies, not only like Alligator, um, but specifically Jaws and Piranha. It's, it's very much in that vein. I mean, all you have to do is listen to the Ritz Leone score for Killer Crocodile to know that how he never got done for plagiarism for the Jaws theme, I don't know. It's, it's so on the nose, it's, it's almost uncomfortable to listen to. I mean, the story is pretty much detailed out there in the synopsis, and it's one that we are really familiar with from the kind of the cannibal side of things. Um, from the Italian cinema, it's a group of scientists or a group of reporters or whatever it is traveling to some hot climate in a place that they're not supposed to be, uh, and then all you know manner of horrible things start to happen. In the case of this one, we're traveling to Santo Domingo, um, and you know we have these guys who are researching essentially toxicity in the water supply. This toxicity has mutated, almost Gojira-like. Um, a, a kind of local breed of crocodile and what you end up with is a massive fucking crocodile a jaws size crocodile which is swimming up and down the water pretty much wiping out everything first indications of that being that when they're travelling along the water not only they're bumping over the top of the crocodile a couple of times um, quite noisily in their boat but the, the idea that they can't hear any wildlife in the area, so the wildlife's either been scared or, you know, killed off. And the crocodile's getting a bit big for its britches, you know, it's starting to pick off uh, local people. Uh, whether that be, you know, um, uh, you know, locals that live in the area or the crew of this ill-fated mission, uh, we kind of follow that through. It has all the beats of a Jaws-like movie, you know, we have our scientists here, we have our, our kind of crusty old adventurers who are going to help an expedition to bring down the croc and it ultimately settles on a massive set piece which is you know geared to give you the the kind of wink and nod to, to Jaws but on a much macro level. As for the crocodile, the effects for the crocodile are surprisingly good for 1989. Yes, at times it looks 
ridiculously cheesy and they show you a lot of croc in this one so not taking the old uh, Bruce from Jaws kind of approach uh, of, of less is more um, in the case of this one where we can show the croc we will show it and the proportions of the way they've shot it make this thing look impractically huge as in in the water that it's swimming in you should see this all the fucking time but you know we'll, we'll move away from the, the, the kind of pitfalls um, it works really, really well for the movie. That coupled with the clearly plagiarised Jaws score. Uh, you've got God bless Italian cinema when they're like that. Yeah, let's just rip this whole fucking thing off. Hook, line and sinker. Um, it, it works. Even from an acting point of view, yes, some of the dialogue is a bit cheesy, but I actually really enjoyed the cast. I thought the cast were, were well placed. Um, they all have this kind of young, fresh look of a group of kind of eco warriors who are determined that they are going to change the world, um, and you know nature is going to uh, is is ultimately going to have the last bite, so to speak. So I thought all that was handled really well in the movie, and um, th the rest of the effects, once again, done surprisingly well. Um, the struggle with an idea of how a crocodile actually eats. So, um, the whole kind of, oh, I'm being dragged under the water, now I'm swimming back up, oh, I'm being dragged under the water, no, that's not how crocodiles eat. Um, but, once again, it, you know, it's recreating scenes from Jaws, but it surprisingly works. Uh, and overall, as a, as a kind of whole package, I was incredibly surprised by Killer Crocodile. I genuinely thought this was going to be a, a pile of shit, if I'm honest. And the longer the movie went on, the more I realised that, you know, I wasn't even thinking about where my phone was. I was kind of fully engrossed in this, like, at times laughably, but surprisingly endearing little movie. Um, camera work is good. The restoration is great on this. Like, all you have to do is go on YouTube and type in Killer Crocodile to see what the original print looked like. And the fact that they've cleaned up as well as they have... Uh, made my heart a little bit happy, uh, for sure. I thought, you know, that work with the, the sound design, uh, you know, works really well with it as well. Uh, I, I kind of jumped through some of the special features. I found them quite interesting, specifically about, you know, the, the cast and the effects, which I tend to jump to as a kind of knee-jerk kind of reaction on special features anyway. Those are the ones that I tend to opt to check out. So I thought that was, you know, they were really well done as well. And as the Italian collection goes, it may be one of the better movies that I've seen as a first viewing in the collection in quite some time. Um, it finished and I had to kind of stop myself from jumping straight into Killer Crocodile 2, which was made the year after. The movie sets up this kind of perfect wink and nod towards there's going to be a sequel. Um... And I'd, I'll be interested to find out whether or not they were pretty much shot back to back. I get the feeling they probably were. Uh, to see where we go with this. Uh, yeah, overall it's a really fun movie. There isn't really much depth that I can go into here. It is a generic AF kind of eco-horror movie. It really is. If you've seen movies like Piranha, or you've seen movies like Jaws, or specifically a movie like Alligator, then you've kind of seen Killer Crocodile. It isn't really bringing anything new to the plate. But what it does do, it does surprisingly well. Um, and it knows how ludicrous to get, where to get ludicrous, and never really go beyond that, which I appreciate as someone watching the movie. Uh, there are moments where, you know, you'll be watching like a movie like this and going, oh, we have completely, and excuse the pun here, jumped the shark. This one is certainly keeping within the confines of what they add. Like I say, there were certain scenes with the croc coming out of the water that I was like, that's fucking awesome. I love the design, I love the look, I love everything about what we're doing right now. I even love that score. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's a surprisingly good movie um, and one that yeah, I will definitely for sure go back and check out 100%. I'm very interested to see if one year later there is a diminishing return with Crocodile 2. Um, we will find out if the Killer Crocodile uh, second instalment uh, lives up to the legacy of the first so there we go. So yeah, that's all I've got to say about that. In terms of grading, this is a 4.5. <laughs> I 
is a ball hair away from me saying I loved it, but it's definitely stronger than I really liked it. I, I had I had so much fun watching this movie. Really, really, really enjoyed myself. A great first time watch, and I can't wait to to put it into my rotation of movies moving forward. So four point five for Killer Crocodile.